Hi, I'm John McCormack. I want to tell you a little bit about the book Nine Algorithms That Changed the Future, The Ingenious Ideas That Drive Today's Computers. Now, the computers we're talking about here are all kinds of computing devices, including smartphones, tablets, iPads, laptops, and desktops. And the main idea of the book is to explain how these computing devices do the amazing things that they do. What kind of amazing things? A classic example would be web search. Many people, including me, do dozens of web searches every day at search engines like Google and Bing. And they're really incredible when you think about it. Um, you get back in a fraction of a second a handful of the most relevant documents drawn from literally billions of documents out there on the World Wide Web. How is this possible? Well, the book explains how. But web search is just one area examined by the book. In fact, it covers nine different areas where computers use extraordinary ideas to solve everyday problems for us. Uh, these areas include things like compression, pattern recognition, digital signatures, and public key cryptography. So in each of these areas, the main techniques, which are also known as algorithms, are explained without using technical language so anyone can understand them. And um, as you can see from the web search example, these algorithms have not only changed the way that we use computers, they've actually, in some ways, changed the way that society functions. And hence, the title of the book, Nine Algorithms That Change the Future. Before I finish, I want to give you just a little taste of one of these nine algorithms. This one relates to cryptography, and my friend and colleague, Jen, has agreed to help me out with this. So what we're going to be doing is, I'm going to transmit uh, my credit card number, I have a credit card here, I'm going to transmit the number on it to Jen over the internet. She's going to pretend to be a server, say, at Amazon.com, uh, and I'm trying to send my credit card number there. Uh, you, the viewer, are going to play the, the role of a malicious hacker who is listening in on our transmission and trying to find out what my credit card number is. So to do this, I'm going to need a bit of extra information. Uh, luckily, Jen, I happen to know your cell phone number. I assume you also know your own cell phone number, right? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. And we're going to concentrate on just the last two digits of your phone number. So fix those in your mind, please. Mm -hmm. And to keep things simple, let's pretend that my credit card number is also only two digits long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two-digit credit card number. I'll add it to your two-digit phone number. The result, in this case, happens to be 98. That's the number I'm going to transmit over the internet. The evil hackers out there saw the 98 go past, but they don't know my credit card number yet. Jen, you have received the 98, um, and you're now in a position to compute my credit card number, right? Yes. How would you do it? Uh, I would take the number 98 that you gave me, and then subtract my phone number from that. Right. So because Jen knows the secret, the phone number, she can decrypt the 98 that I sent her and get uh, my credit card number out. So let's check that it worked. Jen, what answer did you get? Uh, so what I did was I took your 98, and subtracted my phone number, which was 85, and came up with 13. Okay, and that's exactly right. Here's the credit card with the 13 on it. <laughs> so very good. Um, that was an oversimplified example of cryptography. The book explains that example in quite a bit more detail. It also explains a much more profound version of cryptography called public key cryptography, which is used every time you visit a secure site on the internet. And uh, it's really a gem of an algorithm, but it's only one of the nine algorithms that change the future. So I really hope you enjoy the book, and thank you very much for listening.